Hello and welcome to the latest Arcade Attack podcast. Adrian here. And today I'm going to talk about a, a very special game to my heart. Uh, before I get into the nooks and crannies, <laughs> let me introduce Dylan. Hello. And of course, Rob. How's it going? Not too, not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> um, ooh, I, I haven't got the exact date, but it must be early 1990 something. Usman's house again. Adrian's friend Usman, <laughs> the about, guy with all the games. How about ev- everyone Adrian hosts always has a story attached to it? <laughs> <laughs> and Usman was like, "You've got to come and see, check out this new game. Mm. Um, it, it's amazing." Da, da, da. So I, we, we rushed over uh, straight after school, and uh, he put in this new disc. He said, "Oh, check this out." And the intro sequence. Whoa! Did you ask him what is this game? And he said. <laughs> Adrian, this game is out of this world. He, he, I reckon he did say <laughs> that. <laughs> he put in this, this disc, and obviously, I'm sure you can guess what we're talking about, even from the title of the pod, Another World. Um, the intro sequence is incredible, isn't it, Dylan? Oh, man. Oh, God, I love that intro sequence. <laughs> I did. When we first started Arcade Attack, I experimented with a little, I think even Rob's seen it, yeah. um, kind of cutting bits of games together against like some... Um, the Sunshine Underground, I think, song or something, and the, I, I used a lot of the Another he World did. intro because it's amazing, isn't it? When I it first is. saw that on an Amiga, I'm like, "Whoa!" I oh, know. What is this? And this that, that intro sequence, and we're talking about a bit more, but was made by one man. Can you believe that? That's a lot of work for one man. <laughs> and you know, just making that intro sequence, but the whole game as well. Basically, um, we'll talk about a certain bit of an idol of mine actually mm-hmm. a bit later. Um. So yeah, I was blown away. This game, this, it, it, I was like, "Oh, this intro is good, but maybe the game is not very good." But whoa, it, you know, it, for me, it, it blew my mind, my little mind. I tell you that. Um, which games do you think Another World uh, helped inspire in the future? It's got a long list of flashback. Uh, flashbacks up there. <laughs> is that oh, not yeah. a sequel by the same people? I was just kind no. of assuming it, it was. It wasn't really a sequel, but it was from the same company, wasn't it? From good old it was Delphine. Delphine, yeah, Delphine. but it was like a spirit. Sp- I hate this term, spiritual successor. It was. Right? It, it was made really a, a little bit later, but a lot of um, huge designers and developers have credited Another World as inspiration for some future huge hitters. Let's see. I'm talking Ico. Yeah. I'm talking Metal Gear Solid. Yeah. Half Life. Okay. Silent Hill. Okay. So there you go. I think that's a good sort of resume of games, isn't it? Well, <laughs> yeah, it is, <laughs> they'll, yeah, they'll it do. It is, yeah. <laughs> Can you see uh, the links between another world and those games? Uh, kinda. <laughs> kinda. 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 Uh, <laughs> That's going to take me ages to work that out, but no. So, they, so, some are more obvious than others. Yeah, I think it's the sort of cinematic way of, of how the, the game worked and the mm-hmm. sort of openness of the game and the, the, almost, not simplicity, that's not, that's not really the right word, but I think it was a, a unusual way of playing a game. There was no sort of on-screen numbers or uh, buttons or, or menus. It was very open and I think it sort of opened mm-hmm. the doors to future kind of cinematic games. So another world, also known as Rob said, is out of this world in North America. And it had a different name in Japan as well. Anyone ever guess what it could be? Very similar, truthfully. Out of this world, another world. Worlds apart. Good, good shout. It's even more similar to out of this world than that. World of world. world. Outer world. Outer world. Oh. There you go. Um, released in 1991. And it is a cinematic platformer action adventure game. There you go. And who made the game? Delphine. Delphine, but it's <laughs> pretty much made by one person. <laughs> and his name is? Eric Chahi. Eric Chahi, which I've got in contact with Eric, haven't I? And hopefully... You're like best buds with Eric. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, he's, uh, I've sent him a lot of questions, probably a bit too many, actually. Cause he probably looked at it and went, Adrian, are you serious? <laughs> but he, he's a busy man, but he, he's, he, he's apparently he's working on the answers, so you never know. Um no rush, Eric, if you're listening. This time next year, we'll have his answers. <laughs> yeah, but I can't wait. I mean, it'd be great to hear what he's got to say. Um, but the story, what is the game all about? Anyone know? Um, this guy, I can't remember his name. Lester Chaykin. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Lester Chaykin. He is a scientist and he's um, yeah. doing experiments. and Very late at night, naughty boy. He must be back, back behind on his work. And he's, uh, he's like, he has a countdown to this big experiment and he opens... What is looks like a can of cola, but I want to believe is a can of beer. Oh, yeah, but he, can, he, he's not a drink driver because he does have to drive to work. Remember, in his Ferrari, Ferrari, it's a nice car, isn't it? Yeah, basically, it's yeah. The game 
uh, tells the story of Lester, a young scientist who, as a result of an experiment gone wrong, finds himself on a d- dangerous alien world where he's forced to fight for his survival. That's a really simple mm-hmm. plot there. We're going into a bit more detail in the future. Um, I mean, it took Chahi uh, over two, about two years to make this game, pretty much on his own, which is quite incredible. Mm-hmm. So I think he started in the sort of really late 80s, and obviously it was released a couple of years later. And actually, Chahi, um, he developed his own game engine as well. And he completed all the game's art animation. Um, he, he produced it in vector form to help reduce memory use as well. Yeah, there's lots of vectors. And he actually used some rotoscoping to help uh, plan out the character movements. We, mm-hmm. Are we a fan of rotoscoping here? This does the job. I like it. This does the job. It looks humanish. It was really well done. What was the sort of first game it really was done with? I remember? Um, I are we talking vectors or rotoscoping? Rotoscoping, Mortal Kombat. Is Pit four, uh, no, Pit, Pit, I want to say um, Pit before, Fighter. No, possibly. I was going to say Prince of Persia. Really? Oh yeah, before. Yeah. Mm, and, it went about the same time, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe. Well, yeah, and also a little bit. Oh, Prince yeah, of Pit Persia Fighter. was before Pit Fighter, I think. Yeah, I Pit think Fighter is how was. not to do rotoscoping. <laughs> yeah, but he's and also we spoke about it on IK Plus as well, didn't we? About. <laughs> to copy the, uh, the dance moves from um, what was it from oh, that that musical? Uh, I forget. Huh? I forget. Which one was it? Oh, what was I've it? Forgotten. John Travolta musical with um, not Greece. S- yeah, it was Greece. It was Greece. <laughs> it was Greece. There you go. But don't worry, no, there's no Greece in another world. So there you go. <laughs> um, do you know what though? What's clear about this game is both narratively and gameplay wise. Good old Char, he wanted it, he wanted the game to be told with as little to no language or user interface um at all really. So it's very hard any talk in the game. No text really at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the screen is the whole game. So it's yep. very, very open, it's very up to you. Uh <clears throat> which really, really impressed me when I was It's mad how it goes from screen to screen, actually. <laughs> like it's a bit like the it's a bit like the old pitfall, isn't it? Yeah. Cause it uh, so <laughs> oh, sorry, I might be usurping some of your podcasts, but it. has he mentioned Pitfall as an inspiration for this? No, I don't think he has. Oh, that's cold because it clearly <laughs> it clearly has inspired it. That's cold, Eric. Interesting because I could see, and I'm I'm going to say up front here, I was not a fan of the game. I think long term listeners Boo, will Rob, remember get out of my house. <laughs> that uh, Another World was one of the gifts I got in the Christmas episode. Oh, yeah. So I don't want uh, to sound me. Like great, <laughs> but um. I did play it pretty recently in um, prep for the podcast. I was not a fan, but um, what I was, I'm, it's just like a general kind of thing. What I was going to say was yeah. the game that reminded me the most of was Dragon's Lair. Yeah, Dragon's a Lair. bit like okay. number one. If you do the wrong thing, yeah. then you die. Number one, the vector graphics. <laughs> number two, it's incredibly easy to die if you time anything <laughs> like not exactly the right kind of thing. And there are lots of puzzles that aren't really that. Like kind of uh, immediately obvious. Mm. You're just not smart enough, Rob. Me and Dylan, we got the puzzle straight away. Oh yeah, well, I, I, did, I clocked it in like half an hour, mate. We didn't die once no. in the game. <laughs> oh, you die all the time. Oh, I know. Um, you this... think that's bad? Play the sequel. Oh, <laughs> we'll talk about the sequel later. Now, another world. Um, oh my word! What platform has it not been on? That should be the question. Game Boy. Um. Correct. Although it was on the <laughs> it was on the Game Boy Advance, believe it or not. Oh my god! I have to get that version. Um, I don't think it was official. I think it's like a ROM that was designed, so it's not an official release. Uh, right, but okay. you can play it. But it was originally made for the good old Amiga and the Atari ST. But it was ported. Do you want to hear the list now? It's gonna blow your mind. Go on then. <laughs> the 3DO, the Atari 800, the Atari IIGS, the Atari Jaguar. Do Atari consoles even count? Oh, come on, Rob. Rob. <laughs> He's on one this evening. On the Mac, uh, MS-DOS. <laughs> Game Boy Advance, we'll talk about that version, the, C- the Sega CD, Mega CD, and Dylan's got oh. a few, uh, oh. few bees in his bonnet of that version, I'll tell you. Oh, um, <clears throat> the Mega Drive, SNES, and it's now also been re-released kind of a sort of 15th and 20th anniversary editions. Mm. So remastered, remade, whatever you want to call it. And uh, they they went <laughs> on to uh, Android, Windows, the 3DS, the PS3, the PS4, PlayStation Vita, the PS4. Apparently, so probably by uh, you know not compilation. It's probably a compi- it's probably like a downloadable game. It's probably not yeah. you know yeah, okay. a physical copy. 
Yeah, PS Vita, Wii U, um, <coughs> Xbox One, the Switch as well. Have you named every single console in this? Every I told this you. Is? It's available in everything. That's mad. Isn't it? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, yeah, so if you want to play it, you can, pre- you can find it pretty much everywhere. Um, just to sort of wet your whistle, uh, uh, do you want to hear the back of the box? Oh, I love back I of the box. I always like to hear the back of the box. And I've, I picked out the 3DO version. I don't okay. know why. I just thought it'd be a bit weird. Uh, the, yeah. Actually, the 3DO version is a little bit different to, to, to other versions, so maybe they're trying to be a bit, bit kooky. Go on then. So here we go. The 3DO, a futuristic adventure now available for modern day viewing on 3DO. Prepare to leap. Modern day viewing on 3DO. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare to leap past traditional computer entertainment as out of this world brings the world of cinema to the action adventure game. More than two years in development, out of this world, cinematic zooms, pans, close-ups, and scaling creates motion picture-style effects on your living room screen. Its amazing polygonal or polygonal graphics system brings each character to life in fluid, rotoscoped animation. And its digitized, hand-painted backgrounds, new sound effects, and phenomenal music score create speci- created specific- specifically for the 3DO system creates the ultimate interactive real-time experience. 3D OMG. <laughs> now, yeah, the 3D version is one of the more random versions of another world. They try to sort of remaster it and their own graphics and so forth, and I don't particularly think it was brilliant. Does it not look as nice? No. I mean, they had to dumb down the graphics for the consoles and so forth, but yeah. what well, they tried to... To make it look nicer on the 3DO than wow. on the PC? Mod- for modern day viewing, of course, Dylan. Modern day viewing, man, that's, <laughs> uh, the 3DO is the only thing I use these days. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, definitely need to do an episode on the 3DO. We need to get one first, <laughs> and then we can do an episode on it. Yeah, I think it might be, that might be pretty tricky. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I might know some people who can give us a North American one, but yeah, we won't, get, we won't be getting a PAL one anytime soon. Anyway, carry on, A, hey, sorry. But... The rest of the box is, as a brilliant professor hurtled through space and time <clears throat> by a nuclear experiment gone wrong, you must overcome the monsters and deadly earthquakes that plague the alien landscape that surrounds you. It will take a, a keen blend of skill and wit to overcome the deadly enemies and obstacles that are ready to put an end to your adventure and your life. Computer Game uh, Review deemed out this world its highest rated game ever. Damn. And, uh, EGM Monthly named it the most innovative, innovative new game of the year. Oh, damn. So strap yourself into an easy chair. Rob's just shaking his head. <laughs> He's like, what is this? <laughs> and prepare to blast into a real-time odyssey of human versus not-so-human nature. I just want to point out 1991 was the same year that Street Fighter 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog came out. A lot of the world is very different to those games. It so is. This is why the people loved it. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's definitely more influential and uh, innovative than either of those games. Yes, very much so. It is. Um, I've got a little bit more for the plot, but there's, I think the game is quite a simple plot, really. <coughs> um, but man just, needs to get the hell out of there. <laughs> yeah, that's what, the, that's what the plot is. Well, basically, yeah, you're a young physicist, a professor called Lester, and you c- conduct a particle experiment. There you go. Uh, but suddenly. Something goes wrong. A lightning strikes. It's always lightning, isn't it? It's always lightning if you watch Back to the Future. Um, and in a moment, Lester finds himself in a strange alien world. Now he must fight for his life, first with his bare hands, then with a gun he finds. But what gives him courage is that he is not alone. One of the aliens who escapes from the prison together with him helps him on a dangerous quest. Friendship can overcome all the obstacles. And we'll talk about this alien friend a bit more, won't we, Dilsey? Buddy. Good old buddy. Um, how does the game start? I don't know about you guys, but when I first played Another World, I remember dying in the first two seconds. Why is that? Because um, your thing reappears in water and you don't realise at first you have to <laughs> keep on pressing the buttons to swim out. Yes. And you if you th- don't swim out, tentacles, don't they? Come up from the gr- um, You think it's like a bit of the, the interest you can see. Yeah. Is that the game? Oh, it's just a game! <laughs> up, 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 up. Um, but if you if you die and when you die, you just restart the game almost instantaneously. Yeah, it's good like that. It is good like that. It's, there's no massive. I think remember, remember Fade to Black, the the death scenes. <laughs> oh god, so they were so hilarious. <laughs> oh, the Fade to Black death scenes. Oh god, I know, right? Um, I've got a little interview, not from us, unfortunately, <clears throat> but <clears throat> I've stolen um, from a Eurogame interview with with Eric. And the person that conducted it in 2015 was called kind of, called a person called Martin Robinson. So we asked Eric a few questions about 
about another world. So there you go. Mm. Hopefully, Eric, uh, Martin won't mind, mind me using his parts of his interview no. here. So this is what Eric says about a love of games. <clears throat> I was a real arcade enthusiast. I wanted to do it myself. I just wanted to create arcade games. When the teacher asked me what I wanted to do in the future, I said electronics or creating an arcade game. With the rise of the PC, it made me realize that you could create games in your home with just a computer. There's no need to use electronics, just code. It was a revelation. And the exciting thing is that you can master something that's alive without you. That's fascinating. You can put some logic and the things react, depending on what you put into the logic and make some picture in motion. That was extraordinary. So there you go. Yeah. Eric, a smart man. You know, and who? It's a very smart man. Who would, <laughs> making such a classy game, um, pretty much single handedly. I know it's a number of years ago now, truthfully, and the gaming industry's changed, but that's absolutely incredible, isn't it? When you think about it, you know, uh, one of the most popular and most sort of lauded games of all time. It was almost a one man job. Absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. You know, um, he went on, he, he spoke about how he got started in another world. He says this, I was starting to live professionally from games and it went wrong at that time. It was difficult. So I accepted a sal- uh, salaried post to work on Voyage, Al Central de la, de la Terre and Jeanne de Arc doing graphics, but not programming. Wait a minute. There was a Joan of Arc game. There was. Um, but I th- there was, I've heard. Yeah, of it. I think there was. Mm-hmm. And then I had the opportunity to work with Paul Croissant. Poor Quisse. Quisse. There you go. Poor Croissant. Um, on Poor future Croissant. <laughs> Dude, come on. Sorry. Poor Quisse. Quisse. On Future Wars. Yeah, slip of the tongue. Nothing, nothing bad. Slip of then. the tongue. Slip of the tongue. And that was a great time. I improved my graphics and animation abilities to the point where it was very fluent. And secondly, I focused one more time on coding. It brought me to another world. <laughs> I could master the two aspects. So he's it's a bit of a pun because it brought him to another world. Grown, <laughs> grown. Or oh come on, we haven't done puns for ages. Come on, <laughs> yeah, let's get back true. in. We brought him in. And how does he reflect on another world? Well, he says it was very hard work to work alone two years on it because the transition from the game I made before this, the way I uh, look at creation, it's a big transition because I made it alone. I'm very proud of it. It's coming from the gut, like Bandersnatch, <clears throat> Blood Bandersnatch. Like a band of stats. Um, it was, it, there you go, the game was influenced by works that Chahi liked at the time. So the art and atmosphere was influenced by science fiction books such as Dune, artists such as Michael Whelan, and comic illustrations. Here we go, let's see if Rob knows this guy. Richard Corbin. Mm, doesn't ring a bell. Uh, yeah, do you I, know what he did? I don't know. It was some comic artist, but sorry, I don't know. I, I mean, just looking at the uh, look of the game, I would guess he was involved with heavy metal at some point. The 80s uh, sci-fi fantasy art comic possibly, magazine. Possibly. Yep. Uh, he also liked a lot of manga and Dragon Ball as well. Um, yeah, so uh, there was no no mention of Pitfall though, Dylan. Sorry. I can't believe. Oh, anyway, carry on, mate. Sorry. <laughs> or Dragon's Lair. Come on. Or yeah, Dragon's well, Lair. It's all about Dragon Ball. Oh, <laughs> Dragon Ball. Oh. <laughs> yep. Um. Oh, oh, actually, no, look, scratch that. In August 1989, Chahi was impressed by the flat color animation that the Amiga version of Dragon Slayer, sorry, Rob, had, uh, had and thought it would be possible to use vector outlines to create a similar effect using much less computer storage. Rob knows Eric more than Eric I'll knows himself. Back. I've just pulled up Richard Corbin's oh, yeah. Wikipedia page. Is an American illustrator and comic book artist best known for his comics featured in Heavy Metal magazine. <laughs> oh, there you oh, go. Bang, dead center. <laughs> oh, look at that. Also, he did the uh, cover for the Meatloaf Bad Out of Hell album. Would we say wow. that Rob now passes his interview for, for Forbidden Planet? Yes. Yes. And with that bit of knowledge, boom. And you're now redeemed after your uh, Atari digs. Yeah. Mm. You're, you're, you're <laughs> yeah. We forgive you. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> um... There you go. So after first attempting to write the graphical routines in C, he turned to assembly language. He wrote a polygon routine for the Motorola uh, 68000 on the Atari SD to test his theory with much success. Later, he found that the code could run the uh, same code on the Amiga platform and achieve a frame rate of around 20 frames per second. Damn, that's so good for the Amiga back in them days. And he, he, He saw this as a major turning point in the creation of the game and the point where he knew the polygon approach would work. So Wowza. I'm not a, a whiz with all this kind of graphical 
Just we, not pixelated. Yeah, just not pixelated. It, just I like love pre-made polygonal oh, shapes. I love the graphics. I have to say, I, I love that kind of cell shaded. The thing is, right mm. when it's moving, yeah, in the stills, and I'll be, I'll be honest, when I saw the stills of another world okay. compared to the thing else, I was like, <laughs> what is? Just come keep on. moving. Yeah, don't but, stay still with the slugs. Keep keeping those slugs. Yeah. <laughs> but like when 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 I got the Delphine collection yeah. for my Amiga, and when it actually was running on the machine. I was a convert. I but was a convert. If you look at every kind of uh, review of either Another World or Flashback around that time, they every single one talks about the animation. Yeah, yeah. It's it the main. Was... It has to move. The game has to move yeah. to appreciate. You can't like with a lot of other games. You can just look at them like stills and go, mm, pretty. <laughs> like you could turn that into something on your wall, like pretty. But with Another World, I feel like it has to move. It's when it's moving, lovely. When it's still, yeah. Average, if that on like it wouldn't, well, you wouldn't. I wouldn't want. Hmm, I'd quite a bit harsh mm, to Eric. I don't know if I'd want stills from another world on my wall to it. Whereas something like Sonic or Streets of Rage, something they would look nicer. You'd want a still of Sonic or Streets of Rage on your wall in your living room. Yeah, the wife <laughs> won't let me, but I would do that. <laughs> I I quite like the simple another world look in a way. I think it sort of reminds me. I I I think I slightly disagree, Dylan. Sorry. That's fine, man. I love, yeah. I, I love that you love this game. That's what we're talking about. And right? I like the, Jump of the Beast that runs after you. I love oh the way God, that I love that looks. Beast. It's like pitch black, isn't it, with the eyes? It's oh, I hate so that well. guy. I hate that, I that guy. That, yeah, that's the only thing that, like, when I was playing it, I that was I kept on going toward it, and like nothing I did didn't do anything kept killing oh, me. And I was like, what? I've what had is it in this what game. am I doing? In the <laughs> then, like, do you know what? I'll go on to this in detail in a bit. But um, okay, well, we talk about the game. I could just talk about it. Yeah, go on, Rob. Spill the beans. And um, eventually, like, I just thought, I've had enough of this game. I'm not playing this anymore. <laughs> so I thought, like, I'll look it up on YouTube. And um, I'll see. And it's like, oh, you're meant to literally run the other way. It's the dumbest thing I've ever s- heard in my life. Oh. The vines. You have, to du- you have to run back and forth. Like, there's literally no clue whatsoever on the screen to suggest that's what you should Rob. do. Like, it doesn't I've... hold your hand. That's why I like it. It made me actually angry. It doesn't angry. hold your hand. It made yeah. you angry, but... Wasting my time. <laughs> Wasting. I love it. I you love want that. arrow to point which way to go. You want little a little tutorial to say go. Yes, ding, like ding, I go. I'm sorry, ding, but ding, ding. I'm not. I'm not a fan of puzzles and platform games. Ooh. I want platforms to be a, like skill and timing. But that. Do you not like braid and stuff like that? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rob is like. No, uh, uh, I ain't, I ain't <laughs> thinking, mate. I don't play my platform. Yeah, I'm going to jump like, from look, platform to platform. If I want a thinking game, I'll play a thinking game. If I want a, like, a platform, I want an action game where it's skill and timing and that kind of stuff. Like That's why I play platform games. Rob doesn't like his merger of genres. No. <laughs> I'm just saying this. For me, it's not a good merger of genres. Like, okay. Okay. People would beg to disagree, but well, that's, why, that's I, why we have the podcast, that's ex- why we chat this Exactly, through. Rob. Just because me and Dylan don't agree with you, you're not necessarily wrong. Braid. Like, <laughs> get the hell out of here with that. Oh, <laughs> cold. Braid is great. <laughs> well, let's go back to the development, okay? Because um, good old Eric, he took great advantage of the Amiga, actually. and He, he took advantage of the, the Genlock capabilities. I'm talking to Dylan now, like because I think he knows it's better than me. Um and he managed to create rotoscoped animations with the polygons using video, video recordings of himself performing various actions. Kicking slugs. <laughs> swinging on vines. <laughs> um, Eric is such a slug kicker. <laughs> though, though he tried to use smaller polygons, which Jahi actually called pixiegons. No, okay, fair okay, enough. Okay, no, uh, we, we all laughed at it in our pixiegons. heads. <laughs> we just didn't want to... F- Laugh out yeah. Yes, I was laughing on the inside. <laughs> oh, hold on, I just need to do a Lester Chaykin. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, we're listening. Wait, is that a fu- I think I hear lightning above they did in. <laughs> Quack! <laughs> um, but yeah, he made these things called pixie guns and it helped him construct the backgrounds for the scenes based on Deluxe Paint artwork. And the process of creating them was excruciatingly slow. And he returned using bitmap, bitmap images. There you go. Isn't there nothing that like Deluxe Paint can't do? I think it's the best, isn't it? Amazing. Yeah. But he had to go back to Bitmap. There you go. Yeah. Um, and they had that lovely dog. 
the lovely, lovely dog, your friend. <laughs> Just friend. Dog friend. <laughs> I prefer Buddy as a friend. But Buddy. That's a Dulux Deluxe joke. Deluxe, Dulux, Dulux, <laughs> I know. Dog's friend, Dulux, dog friend. <laughs> but anyway, while Ch- Chahi had a clear idea of how to implement the game engine, <laughs> he mostly uh, improvised when creating the actual content of the game. So it's, it's on, on the cuff kind of stuff. So he... He allowed the game to develop layer by layer without really knowing where it was going. So that's pretty unusual. Um, he planned on creating a science fiction game that was similar to uh, Karateka, an impossible mission. He even made his own game engine to make the game. I do like Impossible Mission. I think, I, I, can you picture the Never game? Never got with it. But Never got with it. But a similar sort of look and feel, but Another World yeah. takes it to another level. There you go. Um, I still think it's more like Pitfall. <laughs> <laughs> We're after to ask Eric. I I'm think, not Eric. We'll give him one more question. Is it Pitfall? Um, Is it Pitfall? <laughs> like I said, <clears throat> the game features pretty much no dialogue. Um, giving the player only a representation of the surrounding game world drew in both gameplay elements and the cutscenes progressing the story. Um, what did he make first, do you think, of Another World? What was the first thing he worked on? Leicester. What no? part of the game? Oh, which... Oh, not the beginning. The intro, st- yeah, the intro. Literally oh, the, the intro. intro. <laughs> what? He worked on the intro he before began, he did the game? Yeah, he did. Yeah, In December 1989, he worked on the introductory sequence as a means to validate the full capabilities of his engine. The introduction sequence also gave, gave Chahi the chance to explore all the different types of cinematics he could create using the engine. So Chahi later considered the first step in the improvisation process that he used throughout the rest of development. Um, I love that, 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 that cinematic It's mad, isn't it? It's so brilliant. Um, he finished it <clears throat> in early 1990, the actual uh, se- the intro sequence, and started to work on the actual first level. And he worked at the game at a linear pace, as we mentioned before. So each section of the game was made in chronological order, influenced by its own personal feelings and attitudes at the time. Now, he did a lot of this, Dylan. On his he really hated slugs. That, that When he started, <laughs> first started making it, he was like, oh, these slugs are all over my he boots. Hates- Oh, I hate these guys. He ate slugs and a big dog chased him down the street the other day. Oh, dog chased me. <laughs> dog chased me. I was trying to kick some slugs. I yeah. hate him. Then he made a friend. <laughs> Couldn't talk very well. No, I'm just joking. No, but I think even he would admit, I think he said in other interviews that he's, he's quite lonely at the time, making it on his own. Mm. Um, it's quite, you know, it's quite a sort of, it's basically his cell, his, his, brain, his brain only, really. Um, so yeah, he, he recognized he was trying to create a game on his own. The first portion of the game it evokes loneliness and isolation reflecting Charlie's mood at the time mm. kind Which, of sad but you kind of get that don't you you lost in your own world well. slugs for company oh. you haven't met your, met your buddy yet slugs that scratch you yeah, like, they're, they're evil things aren't why they why are they scratching me like that just get <laughs> off <laughs> I know um, apparently uh, Eric did not have the original intention of, you, of the character meeting an ally but again described the improvisation approach led, led him to include the alien friend who we call Buddy and had included specific cinematics that showed a close-up of the alien to help the player imagine this world. I love Buddy, I have to say. He's a good dude. Mates a robber. There you go. Later in the game's development, Chahi added laser pistols, including the one Lester carries for, for several effects. What, uh, helped influ- what, what, what helped influence the laser, the infamous laser? The laser beam? Him? Yeah, where did he get the idea for the laser? Not Terminator. Even bigger franchise. Um, oh, I was going to say Tron. but um... Aliens. Even bigger franchise than Terminator. Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah. Um, I'm just not up with the Star Wars, man. <laughs> Sorry. But what I like about it, why, why is this laser so good? It doesn't just go... Because you, do, you do your force field thing. Yep. But Rob wouldn't have played these things because he gave Did up. Did you ever get the laser? The screen. No. The laser's brilliant. You can do the old shoot, 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 beep, beep, beep. Or force field. Or for, and... And mega boost. Mega blast, thunderstrike. Mega blast, thunderstrike, <laughs> kaboomba. <laughs> but... A lot of the, that laser, it's not just about killing aliens. You use it as a tool to, to, um, you know, to shoot down walls. Shoot down things, shoot down earth. Sh- deflect, you know, pew, pew. weapons from en- enemies. Very, very cool. Um, Rob's missing out on all this game. You do you know? know what? I think the game, I like it. You don't, you don't start the game with a laser. You don't start the game with your buddy. It, no. it evolves, Rob. It evolves. It evolves. It's why it this evolves is a- like human beings. This is uh one we actually this is one of two main reasons why I stopped uh playing games that much. Number like the kind of thing that you had to spend loads of time collecting and finding things before you could do anything fun. Yeah. 
It's not what I want in a game. I want to do the fun stuff from the start. You want to, you want your like plasma. An e-swat. <laughs> you want your plasma ball thunder strike straight away. I want to do the cheats and I want to get every weapon on Robocop you can't really versus get, Terminator. That's the thing about Another World. It, you can't cheat. You can't it's cheat. a puzzle because it's a puzzle platformer. Or I want to there be there isn't an infinite life cheat. Or I want it to be a GTA game where I can immediately steal a car and start running people over if I want and shooting people. Is that uh, really too much to ask? I think it is. I think Another World it builds up, it, it, but you get the laser relatively soon in the game. <laughs> you got a person yeah, after the first couple of screens yeah. and things. It's not too bad. So <laughs> two. <laughs> oh, Rob, go back and play this it. This game on. took around two years to make, but after seventeen months, there you go. Do the maths. It, it was almost cancelled. I think Char, he almost said, he only apparently made about one third of the game was finished. Um, and he realised that at this rate, it, the game was pretty... And it's a short practice. game anyway. It is quite a short game. It's You can finish it in a good... A this good is why session. one man should never make a whole game by himself, right? I know. But he really... You know, Eric's a smart man. He began to take steps to simplify development, including reusing certain backgrounds, creating building blocks that allowed him to focus more on the game's puzzles. Mm. So... You know, he noticed he had to... Imagine one third. So if 17... I can't do the maths. If one third <laughs> was made after 17 months, how long would it take to finish oh the game? Oh, my goodness. 51 months. 51 months. And how many so years is that? Four, four years, years, three months. Minute. And how many days? Jake's Jake's wrong. And how many, <laughs> how many hours? <laughs> I could probably work out the days. <laughs> Go on, then. <laughs> While you're doing that, I'll carry on. Anyway. Four years, three months. Um, this is interesting, actually. Who who do you think published? Well, you know who published the game. Delphine. Obviously. Fifteen f- f- one thousand five hundred fifty days. <laughs> Boom. Give or take. <laughs> There's some maths. <laughs> there go, We're Eric. not even going to save some time. Gonna... But anyway, you're right. Delphine did publish it, but this is this is interesting. He actually did approach other distributors before Delphine Delphine got involved, even though he worked at Delphine during the day. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Um, Mad guy. Uh, he actually approached um, Virgin Interactive. Who and they actually published, liked, they were, they liked the idea. They published versions of it. But, but yeah, they, they actually said to Chai, we like your idea, but we want you, we want you to change it to a point and click style adventure game. Go Ooh, away, Virgin. Just think, Adrian, what could have been? <laughs> Go away, well, Virgin. He did, Chai considered, had considered changing the game in line with this request, but realized the effort to do this would have been too huge. And some friends who played the game loved it. So he was like, nah, I've done too much already. Can you imagine another world, the point of click adventure? No. <laughs> Just no. no. Um, ultimately. I like my puzzle platformer. Yeah, I do too. Ultimately, he accepted Delphine, Delphine's offer in 1991 and set a tentative release later in November of that year. But to meet that deadline, Chahi had to use storyboards to sketch out the rest of the game's plot, balancing the overall pace of the game. One ending captured on these storyboards, but uh, but was abandoned later, was Lester. What was the big, what was the big sort of thing that could have happened but was scrapped? What would happen to Lester? An alien burst out of his body. <laughs> no, remember he's stuck in this alien world. He gets killed by the alien convict he escaped with because the alien convict was in prison for a reason. And oh, Buddy. We never and... actually work out why Buddy was in jail. No, we don't. Probably well, actually, a loaf do, you, of bread do you want to well. hear it? And I don't know if you'd like this ending. Um, he marries an alien. <laughs> it's, it's sort of close. He becomes the leader of the alien world. Oh, <laughs> colonialist bullshit. That's it. Bit, didn't it? Didn't happen, yeah. did it? It didn't work out. No, but end. yeah, that wouldn't have gone down great. Uh, spoil, <laughs> big spoiler alert! In case you haven't finished the game, you, should I tell the ending? You have to, because I'm going to talk about Heart of the Alien later. So <laughs> he do. escapes, doesn't he? He gets in a pod and escapes away, which I think carries on in... No, I'm talking rubbish now, but he does escape, doesn't he, I think? They escape on a pterodactyl, don't they? That's right, That's right. yeah, a pterodactyl. <gasps> yeah, it's not a pod. And then Rob's like, oh, we should right, yeah. with a pterodactyl. Those, I'm and getting that, flashback That takes confused. him back to his own dimension, or...? No, no well, we'll talk more about the pterodactyl later. Yeah. Um, the game was finished in 1991, which inspired the game's tagline. It took six days to create the Earth. Another world took two years. Rob's face. Rob's is like, oh man, that, I can't believe I missed all this game. <laughs> Jahi noted that, that his own exhaustion at completing this project is mirrored in the near death of Lester at the end of the game. I love that bit. Right at the end, you have yeah. to crawl. Do you remember that? To the, to the pad. Oh, God. If you don't crawl there in time, you have to dodge certain things. Oh, oh man. I love just, that bit. Oh, it's giving me shivers. Yeah, oh, it's giving me little you, shivers. You have to time it right Ooh. and things are falling down. Lasers. Oh, they'll start catch. falling down. And yeah, but it's, it's so It's well so done. cinematic. It's so Oh, I love like it. epic. I love like, this game. Look, I'll go full and say it is cinematic, and I do like. Watch that about the ending. It. Just watch the YouTube thing of the ending, and 
Yeah, what's the ending? That? What's the pterodactyl? I'm going to watch the pterodactyl. minutes in and just got a little bit bored. And, uh, I think you're missing out, Rob, honestly. And we're, Okay, well, look, let's, let's see that towards the end if we can Oh, you're really not going to like Heart of the Alien then? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But upon publishing, apparently Delphine did not perform a playtest of the full game. What? Only having previously tested the first portion. Um, Are so, they mad? <laughs> they were pretty mad, actually. They were Delphine. French. They were Ooh, mad. I... <laughs> French um, but genius. Well, f- crazy but geniuses. Geniuses. One guy made this game. Genius. Well, Delphine as all of Delphine. I mean, look how many. Well, I could talk about Delphine games all day, but they make great games. Well, great games. Well, apparently, Interplay, and they're all cinematic. They are all cinematic, aren't they? Every Delphine game is cinematic. But <laughs> Would anyway, be fair to say that you're a Delphined. Ooh. I'm a Delphined or a Delphiniac. <laughs> Dice doesn't really work, sorry. Oh. I love Delphine. But anyway, Inter- Interplay had also requested additional changes in the game, including making the game longer. Interplay can go s- jump off a cliff. <laughs> and changing the game's introduction music. Boo. Boom. Ch- Chahi was adamant about retaining the game's opening music and had attempted to change Interplay's mind by sending them an infinite fax, a loop piece of paper, um, w- with the message, keep the original intro music on it. Oh, imagine just, that. Oh, that would be so annoying that to receive. Was, like, he's clogging up our fax machine now. It's, <laughs> what, what page are we on? 15,000. That, that is was... the single nerdiest thing I think we've ever covered. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's, <laughs> it's good. It's like the episode where Homer goes to college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't we mean love, that in a bad way. Like, we oh, love look. French developers, though. We love we them. Like I like Eric. We adore I like his, them. Um, the fire in his belly. I like it. We just love them. <laughs> Only when De- Delphine's lawyers got involved and told Interplay they legally could not change the music did Interplay relax their requirement. I think it was the facts, really. It was the facts, <laughs> man. <laughs> the damn facts. <laughs> yeah, keep the original intro music. Can you imagine reading that a million times? <laughs> okay, I'll keep it. Just stop. Stop, Adrian. <laughs> it's like in Shawshank Redemption. Stop sending us letters. We'll give you the books. <laughs> 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 I'll send out twice as many letters from now on. Trouble that bit. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that, Dufresne. I like the development. I like Eric. I, I love how he made this game pretty much single handedly. The, the music wasn't composed by him, to be fair. But apart from that, it's pretty much a one man job. And, you know, credit where it's due. Credit where it's due. It's just so lovely. I mean, I could just watch a walkthrough of it. I don't need to play it. Oh, I just watch it. Well, let's talk about the gameplay then. Um, it combines shooting, platforming, puzzle solving elements. Um, and running, running in the opposite direction. <laughs> running, it's divided into stages. There's not proper levels. You notice that? It's no, not. It's just it's not to you have completed level one. You just go for yeah. different stages. It's screen to screen. I'm pretty yep. sure on the Amiga you could just save wherever you were uh, as long as you had a. Thing. Remember, there's invisible checkpoints. And I if you die, I save my game. I can't even remember. It automatically saves it. And you can, when you die, you go back to the previous checkpoint. So as right. long as you get past these, if you solve certain puzzles, get past certain bits, you can keep replaying it, and you will die. It's a given. It is a given. Um, yeah, so the game is divided into stages. Some of them are straightforward and can only be accessed one time, while others are connected to each other, constituting a larger environment. Those stupid slugs keep on stabbing you and poisoning <laughs> you. In a real world, you'd be able to walk around them. It's so they're, stupid. They're alien slugs, Rob. Get it right. <laughs> they're crazy slugs. You they can't even kick you. them. If you kick one, like, you try and kick the other, then it doesn't work. I hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you're certainly the, the minority. There's a lot of love for this game, i tell you that. I love this. I love having Rob here because <laughs> yeah. he just, like, yeah, just love it. Uh, if love Eric it. listens to this, I don't know what he's going to think of your views, Rob. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, no, I think he will appreciate that it's not for everyone, is it, in another world? <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Um, like, as I said, yeah, typically enemies, you can't really defeat enemies until you get your gun. But you can... Um, you get the gun relatively soon. So the gun's regular function is shooting energy projectiles. By pressing down and holding the fire button, the player can activate an energy shield, which protects Lester from regular attacks, allowing him to fire from relative safety until it evaporates. You really have to use it a lot. You know, you like do. when you go through certain screens, there's like three people yep. shooting at you. You can't exactly just go all guns are blazing there. You can't you need go around force by force fields. You need to set them up. And I like the way that the, the little dots are kind of they're more compacted and there's more of them when when the shield's strong and then as the shield kind of like eviscerates it all yeah. kind of goes to one dot two dot and three and dots. what's good about this game is the like the amiga we told spoke about this before it's, it's one button isn't it so well, just one button tap the button shoot your laser hold it down for maybe two seconds a, you get a, a your force field. field hold it down for three or four you get a seconds you're gonna blag a kaboom kaboom <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the official word, by the way. That's what it, that's what it says in the manual. This mega blastoid thingy is really good. It can destroy, mega it can destroy other alien shields. Yeah. It can destroy walls. It can destroy areas to get through. You need like to destroy a few walls sometimes, don't you? Excellent, yeah. Um, Very clever. But yeah, it's not just about shooting. There's tactics involved. There's strategy, isn't it, to kill oh, your yeah. aliens? Um, yeah, so each level can be accessed by typing a code when the player learns, uh, which the player learns after completing that level. If Lester dies, the level must be restarted. But there is no. Actually, on- it's got a password system, isn't yeah, it? There is. Thanks. But there's no oh, one yeah. screen interface. I knew there was a way of not mm. having to play the game from scratch every time yeah, you Yeah, it's load not it like up. credits or, or life. So no, you, there's you can, a password system. So, in a way, it's quite an easy game to complete because you don't have. You, you always mm-hmm. start r- back where you died, quite, quite just yep. before, really. Which I don't mind. I think that's fine. It help. It, it, it. So there's this sort of game. It doesn't hold your hand, but it also is not it too does harsh hold either. Your hand a little bit, yeah, because it doesn't force you all the way back to things you've already completed. <laughs> exactly. Right. The soundtrack. There's actually another person involved, believe it or not, in this game. Holy moly! I know, right? Chahi Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The game's music was was. Ugh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. I know it, but it was composed by Jean Francois Fri- Fratas Fritas. Freitas. Freitas. Yeah, that, okay, Is it that F- again? R- Freitas. F- Say that again. Jean-Francois Freitas. 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 <laughs> Do you know why he did the music? No, um, Rob. Because Ro- Ro- <laughs> uh, Johnny loves Chahi. <laughs> Johnny loves Chahi. Oh, no. Oh, happy dear. days joke. Well, look, the, the music was... And inf- Dodgeball. <laughs> and Dodgeball. The music was influenced by what, what film loves soundtracks... Chahi. Uh, what film helped? What, what film actually helped make this film? This game is quite an unusual film. Well, not I can't Pitfall. really see it. Not Pitfall, the movie. Not Pitfall. <laughs> Pitfall. Back to the Future, apparently. I've, there you go. We're mentioning that a lot uh, we recently. Have. We Man, have. Back to the Future gets mentioned in all of our podcasts now. Um, you can you can buy the CD and the vinyls available. Uh, it was released uh, Keith. in 2017. Keith vinyl get, is get available. It, Keith. <laughs> get it. Um, do you want to hear a bit, a bit, some differences about the ports now? Because some of the ports are slightly different to each other. I'll kick off with the Mega CD, and then Dylan's going to take. Go on, well, then. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll, let me get to my section. You, you take over a little bit. Okay, right, go on. You but, do your bit, but, and I'll do my I, five minute bit. Do you know what? Actually, I'll, I'll skip the Mega CD. I'll let Dylan do all of that. We'll, we'll, we'll come to that a bit later. Um, I'll go to all oh, the 3D version. The Save th- the Mega CD bit because I didn't to? really play Another World on the Mega CD. But oh, yeah, right, yeah, okay. Save that bit. So the Mega or Sega CD um, combines the original game um, with CD quality new music by Fritas. Um, Fritas! With the sequel, Heart of the Alien. No! And was released exclusively in North America as Heart of the Alien Out of This World no. Parts 1 and 2. No. <laughs> Why? So, oh, it's just crazy. I think. Because it's a mega CD game, they had a bit more space. Another World is a small game. And that's nothing against Eric, by the way, but it is a small game. <clears throat> I mean, I think the people at Sega, they wanted more. And they, they expected a whole new game on top of it. They didn't get that. They, <laughs> they, just, got, we'll, they just got an extension to Another World that was even harder. That's we'll what they Dylan, got. We'll let Dylan talk about Heart of the Alien soon enough. Right, the 3DO version uh, is quite different from... I really actually want to play this. I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks worse. But it's very different. Um, the polygon backgrounds have, have been released by hand-drawn versions, the quality of which varies from stunning to amateurish, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Music is played quite consistently throughout the game. It somewhat resembles a film score. Um, it's more similar to the music in Heart of the Alien, um, apparently, which I haven't heard the music. Um Oddly enough, after the game is completed and the credits roll, the intro sequence from Heart of the Alien is also played in the video version with the same hand-drawn art style as the rest Mad. of the game. But obviously you can't play Heart of the Alien. How weird is that? You just, they're just like tormenting people who <laughs> ever TV. owned a 3DO. Like, you own a 3DO, we're just going to... You know. If you want to play this version, you better buy a mega CD. Yeah. Ooh, the Jaguar version. The Jaguar version. Yeah. Um... The Jaguar version, apparently, the Atari Jaguar was supposed to get another world in what year? Uh, no idea, mate. <laughs> what year? It was scheduled to be made in 1994. There you go. In, in the original life of the Jag, uh, when it first came about. But, so that was really high pitched, sorry. I was a what? C word. But it obviously was never released until, until 2012, when, um, the Jaguar port was confirmed and approved by Chahi himself, and it was released as a limited collector's edition cartridge 
Uh, complete in box, uh, manual, the whole caboodle. Uh, um, do you know anyone who has one of those? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, it was made by a certain company called Retro Gaming Connection, RGC. We actually interviewed them before, actually, if you want to dig it out on the site somewhere. Yeah. And they spoke about their version. Um, they originally we do, released... yeah, we have that. I'll put, I'll put it as a link. Yeah. On the podcast notes. I think they originally released 200. Because the demand was so high, they released another 200, and I managed to snag a cop one of those 200s. Oh, you own it? Amazing. Yeah, who would have fooled it? <laughs> um, but I recently reviewed Another World. Of course, it's going to be a lot, lot, lot of notes on your... <laughs> oh, yeah, so that, that's going to be on there as and well. I yeah. put it on a few Facebook walls, and actually, the guys involved, the RGC guys, saw it and said, yeah, look, we know that a lot of people still want this game. I think there's going to be a third run. Wow. A third and final run. Because how much do you have to fork out for one of the existing Eight copies? Eight It goes for like stupid money on eBay sometimes. Like I'm talking Hundreds 300, pounds. 400 pounds sometimes Hundreds now. Of pounds. That's mad because it people mad. love this game and they want to play on the Jaguar. It's beautiful. It's, I think it was ad- adapted from the kind of sort of 15th uh, edition, 15th year edition of the game. It's yeah. really great graphics. Um, I've actually got it on the Mega Drive as well, Dylan. I don't know if I told you that, but... But I just, when I realised it was coming, the Jaguar. Isn't that your box of it right next I've to you? I've got it in front of me now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my, I'm not going to bring the Jaguar, no offence. You don't want to get yeah, mugged yeah. to that bad boy, can you imagine? Um, but I, I soon realised that, oh, I've, I've, I've ordered it on the Jaguar, I'll wait, because it's going to be the better version. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely, mm. I love it. And it's so good to replay the Mega the Drive one, though, that, that one I got for Rob for, yeah. for Christmas, was it like £3? That's not too bad at all. What do you think of that, Rob? Well, yeah, Rob. <laughs> I know, so, yeah. Rob's... The Jaguar, Rob, must have, Rob uh, must have fallen down one of the holes because he didn't run off the screen in the right way. <laughs> talk about Rob disappearing. Talk about Rob disappearing. Zzz, zzz, oh, he just shouldn't like have taken his can of beer to the experiment, man. <laughs> Rob's been transported to another dimension. Another, another world. <laughs> and the thing is, he hasn't played the game, so he won't be ready for it. He won't be ready. He's gonna, those slugs are going to get him. <laughs> well, he actually had to get the train. <laughs> Well, well Rob just disappeared. It's just okay, Dylan yeah, now. Yeah, you're left with you're left with just us two. Sorry, listeners. <laughs> I apologise in advance. But the the Jag version is brilliant. I have to say, it's um, yeah, it, it, you can do it no, normal version, even speed run modes as well on there, which is a pretty nice touch. The DOS version. So release first was on the Amiga Notorious D, and it came. Um, it was it was deemed actually a lot of players thought the game was a bit too easy. So if PC, you know what to do, yeah, if you know what to do. You can run through it if relatively quickly. If you know quickly. the puzzles and things and you know what to do, I can kind of see where they're coming from. So the PC version includes two extra levels and a slightly increased difficulty in other in parts of the game. Oh. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, the Dreamcast release mm. in December 2005, Out This World, was ported to the Dreamcast. Again, with permission from Eric Chahi. Mm-hmm. Um, That's rare. That's got to be rare. You don't see that. Yeah. About. And also in 2005, same year, a free Game Boy Advance port was released. Um, a downloadable ROM with the blessing of the game's original creator, Eric Chart. Eric's good, isn't he? If he wanted to make this he game on any console, he'd, he'd give you a blessing, it seems. Yeah, he's like, um, what console can we get it on? I want it on... Oh, no. He's done it on everything, hasn't he? I <laughs> and I know we spoke about Flashback. I want it on an Atari Lynx now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but we spoke about a Flashback remake previously, and... Um, mm. But but in 2006, Charhi, and I think he he, was, he worked in the future version as well, he, he helped develop the 15th and 20th anniversary editions, mm. which are just sharper. They've kept the essence of the game. I, I personally think it's it's really well done, actually. If if, if I'm talking from a like Jaguar point of view, mm. um, really, really, really good. Um, so it's really easy. Just get guys, get a copy of the game. You know, I'm not saying spend 400 pounds on a Jag copy. Just get the Mega Drive copy, three yeah, pounds. Get Mega Drive you know, box done. Yeah, exactly. And and by the time this pod comes out, the Atari Lynx version will be available. I'm sure. Atari, I want the Eric. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't quite believe this fact, but I'm going to say it anyway. Apparently, another world out this world, whatever we're going to call it, was the first game to have cinematic cinematic cutscenes. I think that might be right because. When was it out? 1990? 91. 91. I can really believe that. Where have you got that off? I think I got it from Moby Games, facts. From Moby Games? Yeah. It's, I don't know. I think that's a li- I can't quite believe that. If it's true, prop steric. Yeah, because that is quite mm. the innovation, if, the, if it, that's it really true. Is. Um, when he needed to, a model for the rotoscoping in the game, Eric got his brother 
to run around his back garden. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, probably while filming and whatnot. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not some sort of joke, I'm sure. Um, oh, due to its visuals, the game featured in a UK t- the TV adverts for the Amiga. And the advert also featured a UK hit song called Sunshine on a Rainy Day by Zoe. <laughs> there you go. Sunshine <laughs> on a Rainy Day. On Another World, yeah. Everyone knows that. So that famous Amiga advert, you know, uh, it, it, uh, Another World. Yeah, was it does. Up. It does actually showcase, I thought, when I first got it in that, you know, that Delphine package. I paid it a good couple of years after it came out. Yeah. Must be honest, you guys got to it before I did. Yeah, I got it um, quite early on. But when I, wow. Wowzers. It was obviously a big seller. I've got here it sold in the 1990s at least over a million copies. That's a lot. That's a lot. Like the gaming lot industry more. was n- like nothing like what it is now yep. in the early 90s. Exactly. Um, the reviews were, were, were oh, God, I'm going to say it out, out of this world. High 80s, <laughs> high 80s, early We're talking 90s. high 80s, 90s, um, Amiga Action 89. Um, I've got Amiga Power 89 as well, IGN I think, 85. I remember a lot of those. It was mostly because of the, the length, the short length of the game, yeah, isn't it? I think that's, that's fair. what people had an issue with. It that wasn't... is why Heart of the Alien fixes that problem, right? Oh, it really doesn't <laughs> fix it at all. Well, I'll let you spill the beans in a minute, but here we go. Yeah. A sequel <coughs> titled Heart of the Alien was developed by Interplay and was released exclusively for the Mega CD. In 1994, the game is similar in graphics and gameplay as the player plays as Lester's alien friend Buddy. I love this. Charhi had nothing to do with the development of the sequel beyond suggesting, and actually Charhi had an idea, redesigning the game from the alien point of view. Now, Eric was sort of misquoted there. Eric's idea was, what, was, what idea do you think Eric was trying to get across? Um, how the alien got to where he got to? Nope. No, his idea, Eric's idea, was to just remake another world, but from the alien's point of view. So you would actually play the, and you see less. So you see less, and then you have to help him, and yada yada. And that would be making the game longer. You see it from the aliens because you see in the background. Oh, that's what he meant. We didn't. I didn't mention Buddy enough, really, in this podcast. But you see in the background, you can see him shooting aliens. It's really good graphics. You know, it's more of a background thing going on but imagine if that was you that, i think that's a good idea yeah think, so you're actually shooting the aliens in the background and exactly stuff as the alien. uh but yeah so it says uh, his idea it's a was, better idea than what interplay came up with <laughs> <laughs> but he was misunderstood um the company <laughs> um oh yeah so um do you want to talk about do you want to talk about let me give a bit of a bit of background here so <laughs> i'm the only one of arcade attack who hasn't as has a mega CD. Yeah. Uh, through the wonders of an EverDrive I have, I have a all-region BIOS, so Not I bad. can play pretty much any m- game on it, including North American-only releases like Heart of the Alien. I was going to say, it's not a power release, is it? No, because for some reason, they decided that they release it on the mega CD, but only in North America. So we didn't even get to have a look at it over here. Given how popular Another World was... In the UK, yeah, and in, and Europe, it's weird, isn't it? What it, it was made by a European, for God's sake. <laughs> and any well, anyway, so Interplay had a go at doing an extension of Another World, yeah, via Buddy. So uh, the beginning of Heart of the Alien starts where Another World leaves off. So yeah. they're on the pterodactyl. It's actually the best bit of Heart of the Alien is the intro sequence. Which is bloody long. Is it? It is so long. It, it's all about seeing, so Buddy brings Lester in and you see all these little flashbacks to how his, so Buddy is an alien. His town has been uh. eviscerated and you just see these little flashbacks to this like nasty, uh, alien who leads this charge on, on his village and wipes everyone out. And it kind of, it just keeps on flicking back and flick. It's beautiful. Okay. That's so first, it goes on forever though. It's beautiful, and in that kind of same style, so they did it in the same style as as Another World and everything. And then the game starts. <laughs> the first puzzle on the first sort of couple of screens is almost exactly like the first uh, that puzzle with the beast Good. in yeah. Another World. <laughs> so you like you know Lester has to run to the right, get his attention, run to the left, yeah. jump on the vine, swing all the way back. Run away back, and then he obviously gets shot, right? Yeah. So, similar thing. Buddy runs to the left, 
sees the beast, <laughs> has, to, right. has to run to the right. And you have to climb this one little rock and then stand up and then it apparently goes by. Uh, and then you can jump back and do it. Do you know how many attempts it took me to do that? You tell me. <laughs> I knew it was that because, because you, because it was almost carbon copy of the mm. same puzzle that another world starts off with. You knew what to do. You, kn- I just knew yeah. this is exactly what I had to do. There's no other way you could have done it. And I watched, um, a walk through ages after. I was like, oh yeah, I was completely You right. were right then. If you don't get buddy pixel perfect on the exact right bit of ground, you miss the jump Ooh. and the beast kills you. I'm telling you, I took me about, 30 attempts. <laughs> wow. 30 attempts even after I'd seen the walkthrough Ugh. to get it. That's bad. And on the other, the next screen is, um. Do you see Lester at all in this? The next screen is something like rain droplets that are going from the, from the cave. So <laughs> you're in a cave. So your buddy, you, you get past the, the beast. Lester doesn't come into this later on. And I've just read a spoiler on Wikipedia now. Um, so the next screen is you, it's like acid drops. Oh, okay. Are falling from the, the ceiling. A little bit like slugs. <laughs> so, you know, like sometimes you get stagnant, you have to like time your run and yeah. stuff. It's so unforgiving. Yeah, yeah. Even the best platform gamer in the world couldn't get it exactly where you need to stand to get around these. It's oh, awful. Really? It's so awful. It's, it's as, di- imagine Rob's frustration when he first picked up yeah, another yeah. world. He would have given up with Heart of the Alien in half the time. Uh-huh. That three minutes would have turned into one and a half minutes of not so much pleasure. It's a shame, really. It is a real shame. There's potential, wasn't there, for a new There game. is potential. I like uh, the buddy idea. Yeah. Watch the walkthrough, because yeah. if you play the game, you'll want to rip your eyes out. But if you watch the walkthrough, uh, something really sad actually happens. Do you know what happens? Oh, no. So, I just read it here. Near the end of the game... Lester, who wakes up, because obviously he was like he got knocked out, yeah. unconscious of what's going on with the pterodactyl, and he put him down and that. So Lester, who wakes up, helps Buddy out, but then dies in the process. <gasps> no, mm. that's not good. Buddy then goes to find the red-eyed alien. So the red-eyed alien is the one that's sort of like tortured his family and that, and you know, no, I don't like that. Um, yeah, goes to find the red-eyed alien in the fortress again. Eventually, he's able to find him and traps him in a cage with a beast that kills him. So, Buddy gets his revenge yeah, on, but still. on that guy. Uh, at the end of the game... Oh, no. At the end of the game, Buddy gives Lester's body a ceremonial cremation. It is shown later how Buddy's village is rebuilt with its citizens living again in harmony. Mm. It's a shame. So I Lester, don't think Eric would like that, would you? I, don't, I know he's not a fan of the game. Surely, he's not going to like that plot. Lester Chaikin has essentially been killed off by uh, Jeremy S. Barnes, <laughs> has directed this. It's not good. It's not good. Uh, and yeah, the the choice to kill off Lester as well is a bit... No, it's like Rambo. You, you can't kill him off. You can't kill off Rambo. Right. Rambo will never be shot. Exactly. Bullets will fly past his head. He will never be shot. <sighs> Do you want to play Heart of the Alien not now? Re- Yes and no. I, I, I'm kind of torn because I would like to play it in a way because it is interesting, isn't it? It's an interesting part of the game's history, but it, it sounds like it hasn't been done well at all. It's not because when when did you tell me about it? When did I first burn it? I burnt it. I I knew about ago, it, about but half a year ago. When you said you got, got Mega Seed, I was like, oh, oh. I was like, this is not right. I had to watch the walkthrough <laughs> to understand how to like to actually like time it for. I, I was like, yeah, I was doing it right because you think. Heart of the Alien makes you question whether you've solved the puzzle well, it right. It. Because even if you solve the puzzle right, you still die all the time. Mm. Whereas with Another World, and Rob was saying, okay, if you time the jump, Rob, blah, 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 it was a lot more forgiving. Yes, yes. So Another World, still classic, still amazing. Yeah. But the reception for Heart of the Alien was actually pretty good. What was it? Um, <laughs> Wikipedia have only quoted GamePro and EGM. Uh, I just found it, they both found it to be strong. But I did not great. They gave it, let's see, what's this? Sega 16 gave it 8 out of 10. I suppose they deal, you, you got the original Another World on there as well. It, on, That's the, the other thing. So, yeah, so the, that, the Sega CD 
package yeah. comes with both games. And so you can just select from the menus. Yeah. Like word one or two. I yeah, suppose. it's asks you which one you want to go with. And they've both got their individual password systems. So you get So a in password. a way, it's not a bad package in a sense. Every time you clear a screen and that, yeah. you get the password you know, in, in hardware. Oh, there you go. Part. It's just not um, right. It's just too... The difficulty setting is way over the top. I think that... I don't know what's up with these reviews. I feel like... I feel like a lot of these guys have phoned this in. Because, yeah, it just doesn't seem to add up. It reminds me a little bit of when Ron Gilbert left the Monkey Island franchise. Mm -hmm. And it was carried on. And to be fair, some of the future Monkey Island games like 3 onwards were pretty good. Mm. I I actually like number 3 and 4. They're not too too bad. Mm. But it just kind of missed that Gilbert magic. Yeah. And I think it's probably the same. Again, I haven't played the game, so I'm just... You can correct me if I'm wrong, Dylan. But Eric Chahi's love... And his dedication and, and his, his stamp of things obviously yeah. wasn't there. It's not there. It's not there at all. But it's a shame because, like I said, the intro sequence, even though it's too long, is gorgeous to look at. So, yeah. but again, you know, check it, you know, watch the walkthrough. I don't want to see the bit where they kill off Lester. No. I don't want to see that bit. No, 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 no. We don't want to see him where he has to like, give him a. <laughs> a p- again, this, is, this a p- is my last tangent, but in Rocky Five, Rocky was supposed to die. Rocky, wow, Rocky never dies. Rocky never dies. They actually, I think they had to change it during filming. The the, the, the movie exec said, "No, no, you can't kill, kill off Rocky. Do not kill Rocky. You can't kill off Lester. Do not kill Lester." Yeah, they killed off Lester. No, so there can't really be another sequel to Another World. Well, I know it's a long time gone, <laughs> but, and there never would be a sequel. But they can't. Well, be one. I'd love. I would actually like Eric to make a sequel. Or do you reckon that time's passed? Uh, not with Leicester. You know, you'd have to have yeah, Buddy but, or... Well, okay. The time probably has passed. But, you know, we, we like talking about bringing back old <laughs> do. old but intellectual properties. In a weird way, I think Another World should have stayed as one game then, in a sense. It's just a, a great example. A bit yeah. like, you know, or well, just a top game yeah. during that period, that early 90s. Yeah. I mean, it's it really ranks very high for me in one of my favourite games, actually. It's, it's really up there. I just love the feel of it. I love the, yeah. the, 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 it is a bit short. It is, once you know what you're doing, it, gets a, it can be a tad easy, but I, I prefer it to flashback, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. I know we, I'm not with you on that. Not with me on that. <laughs> but there's, I love the, the gun elements. I like the strategy. I like the puzzles. I like Buddy. Buddy's my favourite. He's, yeah. uh, the fact you've got a, 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 an ally, I think adds a lot to the game. It does. It does. We do like a bit of yeah. Buddy Cop. Action. Yeah, good cop, buddy cop. Good cop, buddy cop. <laughs> so, guys, ignore Heart of the Alien. I think that's our advice. But yeah. play Another World. Give it a chance. It's available on every every console you can mention. So, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the pod, and I'll see you another time. In another world. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get in touch regarding this week's episode or anything else, you can tweet us at Arcade Attack UK at Keith Barlow 82 and at Arcade underscore Adriano. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Arcade Attack UK. Please check out our website at arcadeattack.co.uk for lots of retro gaming goodness, interviews, reviews, features, top 10, etc. And you can also find all our previous podcasts there. Our podcasts are available to stream from the website and are available to download for free from Stitcher, Podbean and iTunes where you can also leave us a review and a rating, which we would really, really appreciate. So until next time, take care and we'll speak to you soon.